back in January of 2025, I did a video on the state of Budgie 2024 in review and goals for 2025. Now, it's kind of a recurring joke at this point that the Budgie desktop is either constantly being rewritten or at least discussions for rewrites into various different toolkits and also had this, like, infinitely long away Wayland release. But now with the new year of 2026, there has once again been some new announcements. Announcements regarding Wayland and also the toolkit. So we have Budgie 10.10 .10 released and State of Budgie 2025 in review, cranking Budgie up to 11. Now, if you were there for that prior video and for some reason happened to remember it, or maybe you're a Budgie user, 10.10 .10 might sound familiar and you might be thinking, wait, that released now? That doesn't make any sense. This is the post from last year. We are currently intent on shipping Budgie 10.10 .10 within Q1 2025, January to March. However, as always, we won't ship it unless we consider it ready, at least as ready as we can test. And well... Obviously, it wasn't considered ready. And in case it wasn't clear to some readers, Budgie 10.10 will be Wayland only. In Git, it has been Wayland only since July 2024. We will not support both X11 and Wayland. And this right here is exactly where we are now. As of a couple of days ago, Budgie 10.10 is marking our first release to migrate Budgie from X11 to Wayland. This release series brings us close to over a decade of Budgie 10 development. We are formally putting Budgie 10 into maintenance mode to focus our efforts on Budgie 11. And Budgie 11 is gonna, at its core, the goal of Budgie 10 is to offer a similar, if not better experience than what users expect from Budgie desktop under X11. Now, of course, for a lot of people, the experience under X11 is going to be better just because it's X11. There are things they want that are only available under X11. But for most people at this point, I've, we're not going to argue about this. I've shown the numbers. For most people at this point, Wayland is a good enough experience, if not better for a lot of people. And rather than reinventing the wheel, we focused on integrating well-established and well-loved Wayland tools to create a more cohesive experience. So rather than making all of your own tools that are going to have all of your own bugs, using tools that already exist. Screenshots with Grim and Slurp. Now, ignore the names, but if you ever use something like Sway or Hyperland, this is basically the standard set of tools you would use to go and do that. They're not building their own custom screenshot tool, they are leveraging these tools that already exist. Screen locking and idle management with existing tools like Sway Idle, GTK Lock, or Sway Lock, and WLOPM. I don't no, that stands for actually. These modern solutions leverage the EXT session lock protocol. This is the Wayland screen locking protocol and Budgie screensaver, our fork of GNOME screensaver is now considered deprecated. Your screen will automatically dim and lock after inactivity and manual locking is supported at any time as it probably should be. All of these again are very standard tools and this is the protocol that needs to be supported. If this protocol is not supported, you're not actually doing screen locking, you're just putting a nice little overlay on the screen that can be very easily circumvented. Desktop backgrounds, your wallpapers, those will be handled by SwayBG, again a pretty normal tool to use, and application integration, your desktop portals, that'll be done with the desktop portal GTK and desktop portal WLR for screenshots and screencasts. Now, I would hope they make a custom portal here because this is something that Hyperland ran into very early on. The WL Roots portal is good for basic things. If you just want the kind of things you'd want on a window manager, but there is a lot of functionality this portal does not implement and I would recommend if you're going to keep using it, use this as like a base and then fork off of and go from there. As for the GTK portal, this is the portal that kind of fills in a lot of the gaps. This is for file managers and things like that, because again, this portal doesn't do that. This is part of the reason why I'm happy that Neri is built off Smithy and makes use of the GNOME portal, because whilst I might have problems with GNOME, the GNOME portal is one of the better developed ones and has every possible thing you could want it to have. This combination is... 
it's fine, it's just not great. And anyone who's used Sway will know that there are random things that are missing. But there is a good reason why they are using this combination. It's not just because they felt like picking something at random, it's because of the compositor they are using, or better yet, compositors. For Budgie 10.10, we recommend the use of a W Roots based compositor. The team has put special effort into enabling a great experience with Lab WC. This is not a super popular option, but if you want something that is a floating environment, it's basically the best thing you get on Wayland. So rather than building their own compositor, like we saw earlier leveraging existing tools, they are leveraging an existing compositor. This is a very different model from what you see from either GNOME, KDE, Cosmic, to some extent you can do it, it's just not documented. All of these options, all of these main desktop environments, they all make use of their own custom compositor. But whilst LabWC is the recommended option, it says A, WL Roots based compositor. Beyond our recommended default of LabWC, the move to Wayland represents a fundamental architectural shift. This shift to a protocol first architecture represents a major milestone. It decouples the desktop from a specific window manager, Budgie WM, which in turn relied on a fork of Mudder called Magpie, and makes Budgie truly compositor agnostic opening the door for experimentation with alternative compositors beyond our primary recommendations. Basically, as long as you have the core set of required protocols, you can run anything you want as the compositor. So Budgie goes from being this full environment to now being a set of graphical tools that runs on top of the environment. And for something like Budgie, where it doesn't have the manpower of something like GNOME or KDE, it's not backed by a company like System76 with Cosmic, this makes a lot of sense as the way to build a Wayland environment, and is the way that a lot of things like Cinema and XFCE are also trying to do Wayland. This outsources the work of building Compositor, which often is like the hardest part of the environment, as a lot of your tools probably already just work on Wayland anyway, they just need the Wayland side enabled, maybe they need to change up some protocols, things like that, but that side is much, much easier. The compositor is usually that biggest effort, is usually the thing that is very easy to get wrong, and if it does go wrong, everything else breaks. So rather than spending a lot of time building that, find something that is already really good, find something which has already spent a lot of time making a very solid environment, and then integrate into that environment. Budgie 10.10 .10 will ship in the upcoming releases of Fedora, Fedora 44, and Ubuntu Budgie, Ubuntu 2604. It will gradually become available in other distributions as packages adopt the new release, so in Arch and Gen 2 and various other things where you might want to be using it. And in the follow-up post, we see part of the reason why there is this move away from GNOME-based tech. Of course, part of it is not being tied to a single compositor, a single tech stack, either maintaining a fork of the GNOME components they want to be using, or just dealing with whatever changes happen to come along, and in the past there has been a number of fights about this as GNOME wants to do their thing, but Budgie wants to build off their tech, and in the past it was more like open to building off the tech, but now GNOME kind of just wants to do their own thing and doesn't really focus on the downstreams as much. So it kind of makes sense to move away from that, but I'm not going to rehash all of that here. If you want to go and dig into the budget history, you can very well go and do so. I might have done some videos at the time, I don't remember. But if you scroll through both this post and the previous one I mentioned, you might notice a toolkit being mentioned. A toolkit that is not GTK. A little over a decade ago, Budgie 10 was released into the world. The landscape was quite different back then. GTK 3 and Qt 5 were only a few years old, Proton for Linux didn't even exist, and Wayland was not yet the default in popular distributions like Fedora or Ubuntu. I believe Fedora was offering it back then. Was that, was that actually before they defaulted on GNOME? Maybe it was. Maybe that was a little bit later, like 2017 or so. 
Budgie desktop itself matured significantly with that release. We rewrote most of it in Vala and introduced our handy widget notification center, Raven. Vala, in case you don't know, is very much a GTK and GNOME-centric programming language. By shipping a Wayland version of our current desktop, we are delivering an experience which will serve our users well while we put our focus and dedication and passion into Budgie 11. Now, I know a lot of you have been wondering what the heck Budgie 11 is going to be written in. After all, that's certainly changed over the years, and keeping track of our current toolkit choices has practically been a community pastime. Whether it was the move to Qt 5, which now feels like eons ago, and was quickly abandoned in favour of just sticking with GTK 3, the plans for GTK 4 back in 2018 before GTK 4 even released, or even EFL before we even formed the new organisation. EFL, in case you don't know, is a toolkit from the... from the Enlightenment Project. And at this point, it is impossible to talk about the future of Budgie without also talking about the toolkit it is going to be written in for Budgie 11. And that toolkit is Qt 6. Whilst the first Qt option was Qt 5 many years ago, now it is actually becoming a cute based environment with Budgie 11. This is not just, oh, maybe it'll happen, oh, we could do something else, maybe we'll do GTK 4, because this time is actually different. This time, they actually have code. It's not an idea, it's not a theory, they actually have production code in the toolkit they want to switch to. Their Budgie desktop services, the beating heart of Budgie 11, in our 10.10 .10 release, it is already responsible for our Wayland output management and persistent configuration. In Budgie 11, we will pair this with our Budgie display configurator in one form or another, which is also being written in Qt 6. Also, Kirigami. And Kirigami, if you don't know, is the KDE UI framework. It's basically the KDE version of Libidwader. The difference with Libidwader and Kirigami is there are developers in KDE that don't like Kirigami and just do their own thing, whereas Libidwader, it's very much encouraged for every app to be a Libidwader app. This choice toolkit is only one piece of the puzzle. With Budgie 11, our goal is not just to port to a new toolkit, this is our opportunity for a fundamental re-architecture. We are making Budgie more modular, not only to allow for better personalization for distributions and users, but to pave the way for new form factors, input devices, and workflows. So like KDE, it is also going to feature a lot of customization, a lot of personalization, because people really like desktop theming. Some of that work will live in a new organization providing generic apps as well as more under the hood desktop components such infrastructure, like an XDG portal, pluggable in nature. This gives us the opportunity to work more closely with the wider ecosystem and support more of it. Not just by using fantastic libraries like those in KDE frameworks, great community to collaborate with as well, but by contributing something we hope will be useful back to the community. We want to make it easier for others to bootstrap new desktop environments, ecosystems, or even port their existing ones to Qt and Wayland. Honest, serious question. When was the last time we saw an environment that was Qt based that wasn't a fork of KDE? Because the most recent one I can think of, obviously, besides Budgie now, is probably LXQt. That wasn't a new environment, it was going from GTK over to Qt, but if not that, I don't know what would be newer. Honestly, I think I can come up with the list of Qt-based desktops on, like, one hand. But remember, Budgie isn't becoming a fork of KDE. Budgie is still doing its own things, but like it is leveraging existing tools for screenshots for its compositor, it is also leveraging an existing UI framework for building its environment. But that environment is not using the GNOME tech they were using before. And speaking of GNOME, this puts them into a very different relationship they have with that project than they do now with KDE. With GNOME, they had forked some of the GNOME components like Mudder because there were some changes being made that didn't really align with their goals for the project. With KDE, 
It's more of a, hey, you guys have a cool UI framework. We're going to make use of this UI framework. We're not going to be like building off of directly your components. So things changing within KDE affect the environment quite a bit less. While we don't want to put the cart before the horse, we do want to ensure that as we built, uh, that's supposed to be build out Budgie 11, we are mindful of ABI stability guarantees that we want to provide, primarily to ensure distributions with long-term support are able to reliably target a given version of Budgie. So this is how the Budgie versioning is going to work. You have X, this is the major version number, and this is going to be locked to the Qt major version. So for Budgie 11, it'll be Qt 6, for Budgie 12, it'll be Qt 7, so on and so forth. Basically, the KDE model just not aligning the number with Qt. Y is then your feature releases, your ABI breaking releases, and then Z is your patch version for bug fixes and small increments. So it's a very basic numbering scheme you've probably seen in tons of other projects. Now, Budgie 11 won't be without its challenges, and that's the case for all software, but let's take a look at them. Now, traditionally, the Budgie desktop has been very tightly coupled together, all of the components very much relying heavily on each other. This panel management code is understandably complex, especially given it was originally designed for an X11 era where we didn't have protocols like Layer Shell to offload much of the complexity to the compositor. Being able to leverage libps for plugin support has been fantastic for Budgie 10, and we are seriously grateful to the GNOME community for developing it. This enabled easier pluggability in components like the Budgie panel and Raven. However, the downside of this architecture was that each distribution needed to independently package and maintain third-party applets creating more burden for maintainers and making discoverability difficult, if not impossible. And the process for starting Budgie Desktop itself, the session and service management, is rather convoluted across Budgie Session and Budgie Desktop. We have not been utilizing capabilities of SystemD well, nor taking advantage of user-level services. Ideally, going forward, we want to minimize custom session management code and prioritize leveraging more of SystemD directly while opening the door to adding support for alternative init systems, which is also very, very nice to see. Seeing as communication has been kind of lacking over this development period, the maintainer understands this and wants to keep people more in the loop of what's actually going on. And rather than doing all of these like massive long form posts, wants to start doing more of what he is calling chirps. Basically, short form, more regular updates about what is actually happening in the project, because it's a way to make the users actually feel like they're involved. Whilst Budgie isn't going to be my go-to environment anytime soon, I do want to give it a proper shot at some point, though. I do appreciate more environments being built on Qt, being built on KDE frameworks, and I like more things being available on Wayland, giving more people, you know, choice for what they want to use. So, I guess, let me know your thoughts down below. What do you think about all of this being done? What do you think about Budgie being on Wayland? What do you think about it going with a cute based environment? I'd love to know. And do you think it's actually going to stay on cute, or this is going to be another one of those, hey, we're going to do something different in about six months from now? I'd love to know. So let me know your thoughts down below. If you like the video, go like the video, go subscribe as well, go support Budgie because they're cool. And if you want to become one of... These amazing people over here, check out the Patreon, subscribe to Dali Berape, linked in the description down below. That's going to be it for me, and I had budgies when I was younger. They're cute little birds.